Hi, everyone. I'm Katina McHenry. You are joining us now on our new February Q&A with the Dean. Welcome, Dean Lil. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, Katina. I can't believe it's February already. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. This this year is already flying by, but February is a very important month for people who look like me. So tell me how we're celebrating Black History Month. Well, I think about Black History Month as having both education and celebration. And, you know, McCombs has a too short history of welcoming Black students to campus. Our first McCombs Black graduate is Mrs. Peggy Holland. She is still alive, and she remembers being admitted to UT but not being allowed to live in our dormitories, and this is still part of our lived memory here at McCombs, and so the efforts we make to have a more welcoming classroom are still having to overcome memories of either not being admitted to UT at all or we'll let you come to class, we won't let you live here. That's an important part of our history. But we also get to celebrate successes. And if you've read McCombs Magazine this month, you know that we have some fabulously successful Black entrepreneurs who were graduates of McCombs. And of course, we celebrate that it, the admission season is happening right now. And last year's freshman class was the most diverse ever. We had doubled our Black enrollment from five years ago. So I hope you'll follow our social media as we educate and celebrate throughout February for Black History Month. Excellent. All right. So we also recently returned to hybrid class. Um, we were online for the first part of the semester. So how has the transition gone? I mean, it's not like we haven't done this and done it very well, but how is it going for this, for, for this semester so far? Well, it's a little quiet on campus, but there are students and faculty here. As you know, the Travis County cases were climbing quite a bit in January, but the Dean of Dell Med School says that here in early February, they've come back down. So if you have a hybrid class, we encourage you to come to class, um, but this is the mode we hope to be in for the rest of this semester where a lot of our classes are fully online, some of them are hybrid, which means it's a dual modality. You can be in class or not, but all of you can still participate. Yeah, it's still so weird to be on campus and not see any students, especially like in the middle of the day, on the middle of a, a school day, <laughs> it, it's, it's, still, it's still incredible. But nevertheless, education is still happening. So let's talk about the AACSB review. This is something that the, the, the college goes through as part of our accreditation process. So that just recently happened. So talk through what that is and, 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 and what it will mean for McCombs. So uh, uh, every six years, we have a team come to campus that would uh, consist of a couple of deans from peer and aspirant schools and because our accounting group is separately accredited, a couple of chairs from big accounting departments. And we're so grateful that all of you uh, offered candid feedback and a shout out to Christina Zvanakis, not just for marshalling our report and organizing our meetings, but continuing to improve our assurance of learning for the last five years. And there was an extra shout out for the career management team. Every one of the review members were envious of that integrated operation that so many students praised. So uh, it'll be a month or two before we get the final report, but the visit was excellent and I appreciate all of you that participated. Let's talk about Salesforce and, and what's happening with the implementation of Salesforce across Macombs. So the faculty may not be aware, but we have a lot of our staff working with Huron Consulting on a Salesforce implementation. And this is a really important integrated behind the scenes system to help with our graduate admissions, with our exec ed marketing. And it's a big lift uh, to take our legacy in-house systems and migrate to this world-class 
um, system for tracking customers and clients. And so I just really appreciate everybody that's working so hard in the computer services team and the MSPO and the MBA and the exec ed teams who are working on this implementation lift. We are gonna get there and it's a game changer. Awesome. I know I, it's, we've been hearing about it for a long time. So it's, it's good to hear that it's making some good progress. It's making progress. Yeah. Well, making progress, obviously the, the year is making progress. Let's talk about some of the things that are upcoming across campus as well as at McCombs. Uh, we have some business outlook. This is a series of events that we host um, at the beginning of the year and they're in process right now. So the next one is coming up in a few weeks. Um, so talk about the Business Outlook series and what that will cover. So we're really lucky to have a nice tight relationship with the Federal Reserve Board of Dallas. And, um, and through the alumni there, they connect us with experts on healthcare, on technology, and on energy. And these Business Outlook webinars pair or group a Federal Reserve expert uh, someone out in industry, and then typically one of our faculty members who works in the area. And I get to interview these three experts. That's just a treat. And we get hundreds and hundreds of registrations for these events. And I hope you on the faculty and staff might join some of them. It's great professional development. And the registrations, the attendance at these has been up since we've gone virtual, which is really yes. incredible. It's been so great. So make sure you check the McCombs calendar for the next upcoming Business Outlook event. Also coming up is 40 for 40. That is something that's happening, of course, at McCombs and across the university campus. So talk about 40 for 40 and what that is. Thanks so much, Katinya. I appreciate using some of this Q&A to make a big pitch for annual giving and how you on the faculty and staff can help. Uh, over the last couple of years, the annual giving participation rate has fallen off at UT. And I think this is important for a couple of reasons. The higher the participation rate, the more it signals that our alumni value their degree. And if we have alumni that give a little bit every year for a decade, a little more for 20 years, those become the champions who help us with millions of dollars when they become successful in middle age. So cultivating donors for regular faithful participation is a big deal. How can you help? Well, given that the 40 for 40 is 40 hours early in March, February would be a great time to reach out to your favorite students. And of course, you could volunteer to be an ambassador for 40 for 40, which helps directly with fundraising, but it would be enough to just email your students to ask how they're doing. What are they doing since graduation? How's work going? What advice do they have for your current classes? Are they hiring because our current students sure want jobs? Most of the initial connection alums feel with their university is often to their favorite professors. So if it's been a year or five years since you have contacted former students, please do so. This would be a great time to check in with them and ask how they're doing in the middle of the pandemic and foster that connection back to the 40 acres. Yeah. And I'm sure those connections don't just stay within the school year. I think the, the hope is that those connections stay with those students throughout their career and their life, even after college. Right, and these students may be eager to come judge a case competition or speak in your class or help you with research knowledge that advances uh, your knowledge creation or maybe donate back to your program office. So if you have former students, this is a great month to get in touch with them. Yeah. 
Well, one big event that's coming up that I think has been a hot topic about how we were going to do it and, and if we were going to do it and, and, and if we were, how it was going to be executed is commencement. So there is a plan for an in-person commencement event in May for 2021 graduates. So I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> sure. So we have three different parts of commencement that we expect to pull off. There will be an in-person university-wide evening commencement in DKR Stadium, which is large enough to have all the health and safety protocols in place. We expect the college or degree level commencement ceremonies will be virtual like they were last May and then December, but we're getting even better at a classy virtual event. And by high student demand, we are working to figure out how to make memorable moments for the students and a couple of their friends or family where we might be able to stage areas for them to come through in a cap and gown and take photos, uh, maybe with a dean or a few faculty in view, but safely distant. And I appreciate how hard the program offices are working to figure out how could we pull that off. Yeah. And that's what we're attempting university-wide. Awesome. Well, be sure to check our social media. We will be amplifying what comes down from the university about, you know, all the information, tickets, how, how to, what, what's to do when you get there, all of that information will be um, available on our website. Well, that is um, about all we have time for today on our February Q&A. Before we leave, though, I want to just emphasize it's a very important month, obviously, but it's an important month, as Lil talked about in the beginning, to educate yourselves about things you, you need to learn more about when it comes to Black accomplishments, Black achievements, and achievers who have made great strides in all industries, from education to science to technology. Um, there, there is plenty to learn. So this is obviously a good month to learn it, but of course the learning is long lasting, right? Beyond the month of February. If you haven't picked up a copy of the McCombs Magazine, there are additional ones in the Dean's office and around the building, if you're in the building, um, but we will have those stories posted on our website. So make sure you pay attention to our social media and follow us on social media if you don't already. Thank you so much for joining us on the February Q&A. We will see you next time. Thanks, Katinya. Hook 'em horns.